Um, hello everyone. We're gonna continue with uh, question twenty, which uh, which uh, we kind of answered already in one of the other videos, but I uh, just mentioned this briefly. What is terminal velocity? So what is terminal velocity? Um, well, terminal velocity happens when the weight acting on an object could be a person. Um, let's make him with a parachute to make it a bit less morbid. Uh, when the weight acting on a person is exactly the same as the force of air resistance or uh, drag drag force. Um, of the air acting on him. When these two forces are the same, uh, the resultant force, force resultant, equals zero. And since the formula is uh, or net force or unbalanced force, same thing, the formula is resultant force equals ma. And the mass is not zero, then a has to be zero for that to be zero. So if A is zero, acceleration, if the acceleration is zero, velocity is a constant. So it doesn't increase anymore. And the best uh, way, if you want to make the examiners or whoever's looking at this very happy, if you have velocity here and you have this as time, then as you come out of a plane, for example, you would be increasing nearly as a straight line and then this would get like that until it hits um, or imagine this doesn't go down, it should go flat until it hits this this velocity, which is the terminal velocity um, and then after that it doesn't go any higher, it just stays there until you open the parachute and then you can you can go like you can go like that and uh, reach a new terminal velocity down here which is much lower open parachute um, okay so hopefully that makes sense and that's terminal velocity um, Um, question 21 Describe how friction in fluids is affected by the speed Ok um, This uh, is a similar idea to air drag and here they're also trying to get us to to write a little bit more about about uh, uh, um, uh, drag and um, moving in fluids. So we can say, well, fluid can be anything. It can be a liquid. It can be a gas, or it can be air. And here it just says fluids, so it doesn't necessarily mean liquids. And uh, so, for example, we can. <coughs> Fluid is uh, anything that can flow, so yeah, that would be gases or liquid uh, mainly. And then uh, we could say, well, here's a here's a car, here's a car, and it's traveling in that direction, and um the air is kind of going above it like that and then down again like that in layers and as the air does that it sort of gets in the way of itself and creates these kind of layers of air la laminar flow it's really cold and um that this creates a drag as you push the air out of the way this also pushes on the car so really important thing with drag here is the mm, the most important thing really when it comes to drag is the shape of the object right if it's got a really streamlined shape then there's very little drag 
if it's just like a, a lorry with a squared front like that um, then it's not gonna it's not gonna be very good at avoiding uh, at avoiding drag when it's going that way so sometimes you find these things here which you go like they do they go like that um, on the top which are just meant to make this more uh, smooth and more streamlined you get them also with like these more curved fronts uh, the lorry so then you get the air going over like that smoothly instead of just hitting a flat surface um, so when it comes to 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 drag in fluids uh, and friction so uh, friction and drag in fluids most important factor is the stream lined shape of the object sometimes you want it to be the opposite of streamlined and uh, you 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 have a a parachute and then you want it to be really not very streamlined and that's the whole point because obviously that's what uh, slows you down and uh, uh, you want it to be as as unstreamlined as possible <laughs> so to have the biggest area and uh, to to push try to push as much air as it can along the way and therefore the air will will push back on on it uh, like this and that will slow you down a lot that will keep you from sp being an omelette when you get down to the ground and um, what else so these things are, are called deflectors, really, they deflect the air sideways. The, the, these curved things that you have in the fr uh, top of lorries, things like that, they're often called deflectors. And um, we can also mention about drag and friction that the, uh, the, higher, the higher the drag, the drag, the lower the top speed the top speed of the object will be or, or of the car or whatever the top speed of the object right um, hopefully that may hopefully that makes sense for example if I jump out of a plane and um this is my weight and that's my drag my force of, of drag then the bigger this force of drag is the quicker this will be equal right so i would have been accelerating for the least amount of time so then my my top speed will be less so the bigger the drag the quicker so if this is my my graph that's my velocity and that's my time the bigger the drag the quicker this will happen right so this will happen at a lower velocity lower velocity terminal if I had a different shape a more streamlined shape or I make myself uh, maybe I fall like this uh, more with this kind of um, posture as I go down then there's less air resistance because my surface area is less against the air and then this happens right, it hits uh, the terminal velocity at a higher point because the the force is equal to the force of drag is equal to the weight this takes longer to get to the point where it's the same as the weight because uh, this depends on velocity so it happens later it depends on velocity and on the the shape of the, the the shape of the object right so we need to know this that the higher the drag the lower the top speed of the object uh, we also need to know that um, the uh, that the uh, the drag the drag uh, depends or is proportional to depends on the velocity. It's actually proportional to the velocity squared, I think. But so the velocity is even more important. But the drag depends on the velocity faster you try to go through the liquid or the fluid 
or the uh, gas or yeah any fluid the the more you'll be pushing on the fluid and the more you push on it because of Newton's third law the more it's going to push back on you um, so all of that's important hopefully that that helps the higher the drag the lower the top speed of the object the drag depends on the velocity um, and the shape of the object is very important, the streamlined shape. So the two factors affecting the drag really are the velocity and the shape of the object. Um, does that make sense? So yeah, obviously if you want to make uh, an object go really 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 quick and you want their, their top speed to be very very large, like a Formula 1 car or something like that, you need uh, to make it very very streamlined. Um, Okay, so let's go to the next question. Hmm, so question 22 we just answered, really it says What are the two main factors affecting the terminal velocity of an object? Well, the two main factors are the shape Shape of the object In other words, how streamlined Uh, or not uh, so that would be the factor number one and factor number two would be the the weight of the object okay weight doesn't really matter uh, the mass uh, of the object doesn't or the weight doesn't really matter when there's no air resistance everything accelerates at the same at the same acceleration which is 9.8 meters per second squared but when there is a resistance then there are, there's a fight between two forces. One of them is trying to pull it down, and the other one's trying to pull it up. So then it does matter what the weight is. Uh, so with air resistance, the weight of the object. Right? If you're falling, uh, or if a box is falling, uh, and it's got the same uh, shape, exactly the same volume and the same shape as another box, but this one's made of lead, and this one is made of plastic solid plastic then as they're falling this weight is fighting with the air resistance or the drag and this weight is also fighting with the air resistance or the drag if this weight uh, weight uh, lead is bigger than weight of plastic and um, but both air resistances are the same because they both have the same streamlined shape then the resultant force here which is given by the weight of the lead minus air resistance that's going to be larger so it's going to produce a bigger acceleration than this one here which is going to be the weight of the plastic minus the air resistance so that's going to cause a smaller acceleration the difference between those two forces right and just as a as an aside let me see if I've got, if I've got yeah, I've got time just to finish this off properly. Um, if there was no air resistance, just to prove, so hopefully this makes sense so far, if there was no air resistance, you might say weight, but if there was no air resistance, then you have the weight of the lift, the weight of the lead is larger than the weight of the, um, of the plastic, so surely that's a bigger resultant force than, uh, than that one. And I would say that yes that's true so in theory you think maybe this one should always accelerate quicker than this one even if this one is lighter but if you do the full formula for f equals ma you get that the weight of the lead is equal to the mass times the the mass of the lead times the acceleration and uh, what's the formula for the weight of the lead the mass of the lead times the gravity mg is equal to the mass of the lead times a so it's the same thing these two equations are the same thing I've just rewritten the weight and here we have the weight of the plastic is equal to the mass of the plastic times its acceleration and this is with no air resistance by the way I'm hopefully with no air no air resistance <coughs> uh, so this if we rewrite this would be the mass of the plastic times G uh, equals the mass of the plastic times A 